This is the local pickup we have picked up. <laughs> we are local. Welcome to the local pickup. <laughs> I'm Jason Broadwater. I'm Chris Trevay. And we are going to talk about guitars and then give a little money to charity. So we're going to start with the Telecaster. And the reason why we want to start with the Telecaster, episode one of the local pickup, is because we love electric guitars. And this guitar, the Telecaster, is the first, now get this, the first mass-produced Spanish-style electric guitar. Spanish-style, you say? Ever. So, that sounds weird That's and obscure. Confusing. Yes, it sounds weird and obscure, but here's the thing. The guitar shape that we recognize as being like a guitar. Mm -hmm. Or the electric guitar, yeah. Or really any guitar. Okay. That shape that looks like a guitar like versus... Like our, our caveman ancestor's guitar. <laughs> yes. The Play-Doh icon of a guitar <laughs> yeah. is, a, is a Spanish instrument. That acoustic guitar, oh, okay. that shape of a guitar. Oh, um, right, right, gotcha. Versus like a lap steel, shape gotcha. of a lap steel, okay, yeah. shape of a banjo. But that shape that we recognize is a Spanish shape. So thank, thank the Spanish for your rock and roll guitar. Yes, and so... Um, that the there were people inventing technologies like uh, the pickup and stuff and the, the electronics behind the pickup. Um, Rickenbacker, which we'll do an episode on Rickenbacker, was the first person to actually cre create a mass uh, commercially produced electric guitar, oh, yeah. and we'll talk about that. But in 1950, Leo Fender, who wasn't a uh, he wasn't a player, he was. Uh, That's not what I've heard. <laughs> hey, he wasn't a guitar player. He wasn't a musician. He was an engineer. He made um, amplification technology um, that was, he was involved in the kind of revolution of that. He decided to make a guitar, and to make an electric guitar. Now, we'll get into how, you know, people say Les Paul invented the electric guitar, and he kind of did. Adolf Rick. A guy said that to me on the, uh, this morning. People say it to me all the time. I mean, me. I, just now, somebody said yeah, it. He threw a brick through a window. Invisible <laughs> David said that just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, the, the, the Telecaster, it was actually released under a different name, and I'll tell you that, but when Leo Fender released it, it was the first commercially produced, mass produced, what we think of as an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, he made it, um, it was first called the, um, he had two versions, he had a single pickup version that was called the Esquire, and a double pickup version that was called the Broadcaster. And he made it in 1950, and it's the simplest... Are you just saying that because your last name is Broadwater? Yes. It's the simplest design that you can think of, dude. It's, a, it's an ash body. It's a bolt-on neck. So this neck is bolted on. It's a separate piece of wood. This is a maple uh, neck. And he made it bolt-on so that you could take it off, repair it, replace it. It was like the working man's guitar where, you know, people working on their cars, you know, like dudes out in the yard working on their mm -hmm. cars. It was supposed to be the guitar that you could do that with. The electronics are all hooked to the back of this plate. You can pull the plate off. It's all right there. It's super easy, super simple. This is actually a uh, 2002 replica of a 1952. Um, so it's, it's made to be just like the 1952 Telecaster. And it's the simplest guitar design. And when, it was, when he first made it, there's a story that um, Gret, Mr. Gretch, from <laughs> Gretch Guitars. You know what I mean? Seriously, like, hey, Mr. he had a cigar. <laughs> he was like, ah. <laughs> that he was like, this is a paddle, man. You can't be serious that you're going to sell this. This is a paddle. It's a what, am I going to get in a boat with this? <laughs> but the point was, man, is that all guitarists were facing the same issue at the time. They couldn't be heard. And the guitar was not a forefront instrument because it wasn't loud enough. And they were b back by the hi-hat yeah. playing chords. So what time period is this? Oh, so, okay, good point. So, like, in the, in the 20s and 30s, when you had the jazz era, the guitar was a backup yeah. instrument because it couldn't be loud enough. And you'll often see that with, like, the big band, and there's, yes. like, a guy with the guitar, and he's just... He's back there, kind of. Like, you he yeah. don't hear it at all. You're like, well, you gotta wait. When when does it get to sound like in excess? Yeah, right. So as people were inventing um, pickup technologies, like microphone technology, they started hooking them to their um, their acoustic guitars. But it would feed back so bad it wouldn't work. So um, that's when Les Paul invented the uh, log, and we'll talk about that in the Les Paul episode. But Leo Fender came out with this in, in, in California, and a bunch of folks who were on TV, country, western stars, and mm -hmm. people that wanted to be heard bought these oh, things. Oh, interesting. They were, su they were inexpensively made. Again, super simple. Yeah. It's just a piece of ash wood. And, uh, wow. and he made it look like a Spanish guitar, so people recognize it as a guitar. But really, it, it could have been any shape. I mean, 
Um, so maybe that's is that in I don't know from is that the reason why the Telecaster is kind of forever linked to kind of country lead guitar well, players? Yes. That, that they were the thing at that time yes. that wanted to be heard. The country western folks before the jazz people got a hold of it. The country western folks that wanted to be heard snapped it up real quick out in California, and they went on TV with it and everything. And people all of a sudden saw like a young fella who would be behind the main guy that's singing with an acoustic guitar yeah. with a great voice yeah. and then all of a sudden this young guy would do a solo yeah. and you could hear it yeah. and it was on one of these. So it's like the Bakersfield country that, yes. that kind of comes from. Interesting, Absolutely. I, didn't, I didn't know that. So what happened was in 1950 he released it again Esquire and Broadcaster and Gretsch already had a drum kit called the Broadcaster. So what they did was they, they said, they, like they were friends, and he, he said to Leo Fender, you, you can't sell it as broadcaster. We're going to have to sue you. You can't do that. Classic Gretsch. Classic Gretsch, Mr. Gretsch. He was like, hey, Leo. You can't sell it. <laughs> he was the cab driver from uh, Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. He was the coach, gross, ghost of Christmas past. That's I, the guy from the New York Dolls. The, 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 is it really? Scrooge, yeah. I didn't know David that. David Johansson, yeah. That's so, awesome. A little bit of tidbit. So Gretsch said they can't use the, uh, tele the broadcaster name. So... For one year, in 1951, they had already made a bunch of broadcasters, and they sanded off the name broadcaster, and they're called no-casters. You can still find them. There's a few of them, and they're crazy expensive, dude. But they're called no-casters. That sounds no exactly like the thing that would be crazy expensive. I know. <laughs> it's one year of, of Telecaster that was made with no name on it. And um, then in 1950— And it opens a portal to hell. Exactly. It does. And, and then in 1952— they changed the name to Telecaster and they released it and it was it was the first kind of full release of the Telecaster in 1952 and this is a 2002 uh, reissue of the 52 so it's supposed to be made just like the 52 and it's got a maple fretboard and it's got some finish on it small frets it's got these single coil pickups that are real hot in other words when you hear it it's as soon as you you know you plug it in it starts going you know because mm -hmm. it's got that hot single coil pickup but it has a sound because of the bolt on neck and the wood and the pickups, this real slappy and twangy. I'm gonna let you play it a little bit. Hey. That defined country music, man, for what, 50 years? Yeah, I mean, it's still absolutely, and even through, uh, which, uh, in case you don't know this, we, uh, we, we present ourselves as guitar enthusiasts. Oh yeah, um, not experts, that's for sure. Yeah. But <laughs> we learn, I love to learn about guitars. A little bit country. I want to know this. Yeah. So this is the classic. This is the one riff. If you know me, and I've gotten a lot of mileage out of the old. There you go. When you bend one string but not the other. Yeah. Yeah, and it bends it into that chord. Yeah. And that's the one thing. If I play solo, that's the. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna kind of see how that but, hits the crowd, and then I start, you know, doing other stuff. <laughs> if they start melting. And, yeah. Yeah. But that Buck Owens country sound. The, yeah, all that way up here, that slappy, yeah, kind of low end. The um, yeah, I know it's it's it has not faded from view. It's you're still going to see country lead guitarists are definitely playing this thing to this day. And I was introduced to it as like uh, when I was younger. I was and I it's like to this day like the alt country thing that happened in the '90s that's still around with like old '97s and Whiskey Town. Um, and that was the lead guitar player was gonna have yeah. a Telecaster, and that's still that sound. And I, now, when I see especially this blonde Telecaster, I see Bruce Springsteen. So I was gonna say that. Okay, so not only did it define country I didn't music for close 50 the gap years, on a whole big segment that it did. I sorry. No, this is perfect. Time. Like not only did it define country music for 50 years, but you know that kind of hand in the air, epic yeah. rock and roll. I mean, not only um, the boss, but uh, Keith Richards. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. played that for decades. Yeah, with the five strings. Does. Am I wrong? He plays five strings? Didn't I always heard? I oh, always had like a broken had, high end or something? Well, he, he only plays with five strings. Or he had like this open G tuning. I don't, don't oh, okay, yeah. But, that. That's what I always heard. But that kind of hand in the air, epic rock, born to run is, a, is associated working with Working man's the guitar. Working, this is the working man. It really hey, is. Hey, hey, hail the working man. Dude, it really is, man. Because like, you know, we'll talk about the Les Paul, but it's a very complicated instrument and they were trying to, you know, get nice tones. I mean, Leo Fender, basically, the bolt on neck. Look, all the tuners on the top, you know, because his engineering design was he wanted to keep the strings as straight as possible. You know how there were normally tuners on both sides of the headstock, yeah, yeah, right? So yeah, yeah. He wanted to keep it as straight as possible. And then for the player, it was easier to reach it if they're all on top instead of having to reach around. Right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, you know, uh, is it, uh, what's the guy's name that plays the pedal steel player? Uh, <laughs> Junior Brown? Okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that he, you know, I've seen him play, and he'll literally play the tuners. And oh, wow. And he'll bend it. But I guess if you've learned how to play pedal steel, then that's yeah, right, yeah, whatever. But, but it yeah, is, I mean, it is definitely, and like I mean, the simple design, dude. The, this ashtray uh, 
kind of whole bridge system here. Mm -hmm. Everything about it is super. If you start looking at the parts, it's a spring and a little piece of metal, some screw. I mean, it's so simple. It's something you'd make in shop class, you know. Yeah. And well, it, I wouldn't make it. Well, I wouldn't. Class. Yeah. But but the thing is, is man, still to this day, the greatest players play them stock. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people might hot rod right, it with yeah. pickups and stuff, but generally they play it stock. To his design that he did in 1952, it was, people say, you know, they got it right, he got it right the first time. He really did. I mean, it's... it's if a, it ain't broke. Yeah. And, it, and think about One it, those. electric guitars could have looked like anything. The fact that it looks True. like a Spanish guitar is kind of, is from Leo Fender. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. It yeah. could have looked like a T-Rex. <laughs> it could have looked like a little... Yeah. A T-Rex shaped. <laughs> it could have looked like a pizza. It could have been a pizza. <laughs> um, uh, what other internet stuff? <laughs> um, a cat. A cat. Yeah. Could look like a cat. <laughs> it could have looked like an app. Yeah. Um, but think about it. It could have just been a rectangle, like right. some of those Which crazy are, bases. The, yeah, like right. Bo, uh, <laughs> Bo Diddley has the, the boxy Oh, right, guitar. yeah. Um, and what, there was that, I remember when I was a child, my parents got me a guitar book for Christmas. And I remember I learned about the... It was Rickenbacker that made the electro Spanish guitar, and it was like the first electric guitar. Well, they made yeah. the frying pan. We'll talk about that. that. I guess that yeah, was, was frying the pan. first electric the guitar. Pan. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll that at a later yeah. date. So one thing I bet I know that I bet you don't know. This is it was Jason was referring to the bolt-on neck, which was actually invented by Michael Bolton, <laughs> and this named for it's, it, it keeps his namesake. He keeps his namesake. <laughs> he was playing. <laughs> A song with Gloria Estefan, and he was accompanying her, and he was like, "How about a guitar?" And it just and know, they were like, "Wow!" People made, his people made it for him. Yeah, really. well, we have. But yeah, and so that's why we have the Michael credit. Bolton experience. Neck. The neck. Michael Bolton neck. Yeah, and that's all I have to contribute. That's not true. Sorry. I mean, it kind of sounds like Bolton a little bit. It does. It does. Let me see it. <laughs> Let me show you how this thing works. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You know, I, which we don't have a Gretsch Chet Atkins, but that was the first ever guitar I remember hearing when I was kind of discovering guitars at a young age and hearing like Brian Setzer play it and that deep kind of, it's hard to explain. I want to say woody sound because right, right, it's right. like you can hear the wood. Um, and I remember, uh, I would, I, I was the first thing I knew to talk about in guitars. I got Brian Setzer and the Gretsch Chet Atkins and I heard someone told me like, well, Telecaster can sound like that. And I was just like, no, it's not the Gretsch Chet Atkins. Right. <laughs> Uh, but then it turns out it can, that big woody from a small guitar, that sort of big, full... And it's funny, man, to have such a distinct voice, it's actually a pretty versatile instrument. I mean, people play it in all kinds of song genres, yeah, man. Like alternative bands. I know, I, I play this in one of my bands, and it's uh, punk, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, El Jefe from No Effects. I always play it. Really? Guitar. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, people play, it's probably, you know, one of the most played guitars and celebrated guitars, um, of course, because it's essentially the first electric guitar, again, not by definition, but it, from what we think of as an electric guitar, what started the electric guitar revolution, this guitar started it all pretty much. Yeah, and it yeah. has, it, it makes sense because it has a real sort of home base kind of shape yeah. to it. And if you think about it, man, if you really look at it from like a, could I make this in the shop? I can see why Gretsch, who was making, I mean, you know, the guitars they were making, they were almost like em emulating the Stradivarius violins. Like, the craftsmanship that was going into those guitars was oiled woods and aged woods and all. Yeah. And then he comes and he just like, basically in his shop cuts out this ash body right. and puts these electronics on it. And they're thinking, dude, this is amateur hour, man. Right. Well, because it seems to me, and I'm speaking as not as an expert, it seems to me that with acoustic guitars, you, you're a little more at the will of what the wood needs to have going right. on to sound good. And electric guitars, aesthetically, you have a little more freedom. Oh, yeah, because it's basically the solid body under the pickups that creates all the sound. The rest of this body, now people will argue that, the, that it reverberates through this wood and therefore that contributes to tone, uh, but so many things contribute to tone. I mean, it's, That's a children's tale. It's very likely, man, that if you cut this out right here and you just had what's under these pickups, that you could, you could close your eyes and you could not tell the difference between those two instruments, one that had the rest of this and one that was just the wood under the pickups. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's all coming from the strings of pickups and the fact that it's on a hard surface and a solid body. Versus what would happen is the, uh, on an acoustic guitar, the, the wood re reverberates and that's what creates the sound. But the strings reverberate too. Mm -hmm. And then when there's electronic trying to pick up the, the electronics, the, the sound in between those two things that are reverberating, it creates loops of feedback like crazy. Mm -hmm. So it had to be on something solid to make it work, you know. Now can the electronics 
hear my thoughts? Yes. Do they have my data? They do. Well, you definitely don't want to say your credit card information out loud near an electric guitar. Don't order anything in the yeah. vicinity of an electric guitar. Don't say your social security number near an electric guitar. Yeah. Don't, don't say all your preferences and internet usage right. techniques. Cool. So anyway, that is the Telecaster, the beginning of the guitar revolution in, in this country, the rock and roll guitar revolution. I wouldn't say guitar revolution because, you know, uh, acoustics predate it. But it's a pretty amazing instrument that will keep, keep trucking. So what we're going to do now is transition away from uh, talking about guitars, and we are going to give a little bit of money to a nonprofit organization. We have built an application called Givolio. You can go to givolio.com and you can use it yourself, but you can pick any nonprofit that you want to give uh, money to, whatever you feel like, um, however you want to make a difference. You can organize the nonprofits in any way that you want to organize them. It's every nonprofit, every 501c3 in the nation is in there. You organize them how you want and you can set up gifts. You can give $5 a month to this group or $2 a month to this group or $10. It's for micro giving, small giving. We believe that giving makes the world a better place and that Givolio makes giving easier. So for every episode of the local pickup, we are going to give 10 bucks. Uh, it's not a game changer, but we're doing a little bit. Uh, give 10 bucks to a nonprofit organization and Chris is gonna tell us which nonprofit that we're gonna give to today. So you may have noticed we're both wearing red, um, which we are, you know, <clears throat> like, what is this, the red shirt guy thing? Well, it's February 1st here in, uh, in local our pickup world. land, uh, <laughs> wherever you are, uh, um, which is Wear Red Day for Women's Heart Health Awareness. Um, and we decided that that would be appropriate today to give to uh, the American Heart Association, which is a very prominent nonprofit. Um, but it's the thing is, uh, heart health is, I mean, it's the leading cause of death. Yeah. So it makes it's like, it's, I mean, the sort of like to fund research and provide awareness and to the sort of like, to stronger public health policies. Um, that's what American Heart Association is about. And um, I think it makes a lot of sense to do today. Yeah. Um, and it is important. I mean, I know I have many people in my family that have I've lost to heart disease. Well, it's funny. We get very excited in this country about things that might uh, harm a very few amount of people. Not that we shouldn't be, because if they're scary and harmful, fine. And we'll probably talk about that. And we probably will. But we tend to ignore the one that takes the most lives. I mean, behind mosquitoes, you know, you got heart disease. And it, it takes the most lives in the United States. And so, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think, yeah, anything that, that moves the needle on just consciousness around that and, and research and technology and everything, I think it's one of the foremost kind of practical, real health issues that everyone or most people will bump up against it, whether it's themselves or someone they care about. Um, so that's why I decided to give our $10 donation from this episode to the American Heart Association. All right, yay. All right, well, that's uh, the local pickup, and I guess we'll see you again on the next episode. <laughs>